بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in Surah Al-Hashr, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lagad. Wa attaqu allah, inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Allah Azza wa Jal says, O you who believe, fear Allah Azza wa Jal, and look, and look at what you have prepared for tomorrow. Indeed, you should fear Allah Azza wa Jal. For verily Allah Azza wa Jal is all aware of what you do. And if we look at this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal begins by telling us to fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Because that's what each and every single one of us was created for in this world. Because one day we will return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. So we were created to cre worship Allah Azza wa Jal in this world and to fear Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator of all things. And then he tells us to look at what we have prepared for tomorrow. So we should ask ourselves, what have we prepared for tomorrow? What have we done in this world that we can show to Allah Azza wa Jal and be happy to present it to Allah Azza wa Jal? وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لغد. And every single person should look at what he or she has prepared for tomorrow. We as human beings, we were created for one purpose. And that purpose is to worship Allah to the best of our abilities. To the best of our abilities, we should worship Allah And each and every single one of us, has an appointed, an appointed time. We all have a time limit on this earth. We all have an expiration date. Not a single person is able to prolong that date or, put, or, or, call, or call a time out to pause for a second when that time is, comes. There's no running away from it. You cannot add an extra hour to it. And we've all witnessed this with our own eyes from people that have passed before us. People whose time has already expired. Whether we experienced it firsthand, directly or indirectly. We've seen grandparents who spent an entire life, their entire lives raising their children and then the children have children and so forth. And you see elders who pass away whose time expired without even experience of family life, who have passed away alone. We've seen parents who've never experienced the life of a grandparent. We've seen adults 
who lived their entire lives alone, never experienced a married life. Or we've seen people who get married and then they pass away on their wedding day. Or we've seen parents or families and spouses who live for a few years together. And then finally, when they are reached, they are given the blessings of a child. Someone from that, one of the couples, one of the spouses passed away. So that, so that individual never got to experience the life of a parent. We've seen children who passed away at a very young age. We've seen teenagers who die at a young age without even experiencing the life of adulthood and so forth. So every single person on the face of this earth has a time limit. And every single one of us, our time will eventually come. And we are not guaranteed to see tomorrow. We are not even guaranteed to live the next minute, the next second. We're not guaranteed to live for a week or a month or a year or a few years from now. But what is guaranteed for each and every single one of us is that our time will one day expire. And I've witnessed this with my own eyes. When my mother, rahmatullahi alayha, when she was sick with cancer and she was going through her agonies for an entire month or two and on the day that she passed that morning she passed away in our in the, uh, the house that she uh, raised us in she passed away and it was hard for us to accept and my mom what she used to have on uh, in her living room she had this table and she used to have this little calendar I don't know if, in, if you have seen this calendar before. It's a calendar, and on each and every single day, there's an ayah on it. So for each and every single day, there's an ayah that is mentioned on that calendar. And on the day that she passed away, rahmatullahi alayha, was on December 14th. And what was read on that day, on December 14th, is the ayah of Allah Azza wa Jal. Where Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلٍ and every nation will have his appointed time. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ And then when their time comes, their appointed time comes, there's no way for them to delay that for an hour, nor are they they're able to proceed it. So each and every single one of us has a limited, a limited time in, in this world. And we will have that day where our time will expire. But what have we prepared for that day? What have we prepared for that day when we meet Allah Azza wa Jal? What have we prepared when we are, our bodies are being placed in the grave? And this is why Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whenever he, he used to stand in front of the grave, he used to weep and he used to cry so much to the point where his beard would be soaked and drenched in tears. And those around him would ask him, Why is it that when, the, when Jannah and Hellfire is mentioned, you don't cry, but you cry to this? When you stand in front of the grave, you cry. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, I heard the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the grave is the first home that you will enter from the homes of the Akhirah. And if an individual passes the test in the grave, then, any, then everything else that comes after it will be easy. But if the person pa fails to pass the tests in the grave, then everything that comes after will be a lot more difficult. And then the Messenger وسلم, he says that this is the worst sight he's ever seen. There's no sight more scary, more uh, frightening than that of the grave. And this is why Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, whenever he would go and visit the grave, he would weep and he would cry because he would fear for his life and how his outcome would be in the grave. Because if it turned out that he passed every single thing in the grave, then his life after the grave would be a lot easier. But if he failed, then he knows that everything that comes after will be a lot more difficult. And this is why when we go and visit the grave and so forth, it's a great reminder to us that one day we will be placed in that grave. And when we are placed in that grave, not a single person will go in there with us. Nothing that we accumulated, not the wealth that we collected and so forth and earned in this life will go with us in the grave. Our parents will not go into the grave with us. Our children will not go into the graves with us. 
The friends that we associate will not even be there for us in the grave. We'll be there alone. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in a very famous hadith, that when a person passes away, there will be three things that follow that individual to the grave. And two of these, two of these three things will leave and only one will remain. remain. His family and his wealth will leave him. But only his good deed will be his companion in the grave. So what have we prepared for that day that our time expires? What have we prepared for tomorrow? We should ask ourselves, ourselves this. What have we prepared for tomorrow? Al-Imam Al-Ghazali, rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions in his book, Bidayat al nihaya he says that our time, awqatuk umruk, that your days, your time, is your life. And your life is the head of your wealth. I mean, that's the most important part of your wealth. And with that wealth, your life is what you invest with. That's what you start your business with. And that business that you invest your life with will bring you to the, the uh, final bliss, final happiness with Allah Azza wa Jal. And that life that you take care of, the life that you spend in this world and you invest in, will bring you to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he says, don't be like those who become happy when their wealth increases, but their life shortens. How can, how can there be any good in a person who feels happy with their wealth increasing, but their life is shortening? But you should be happy when your knowledge increases. And your good deed increases. Because those are the two things that will accompany you in the grave when you're all alone. Those two things will be your companion in the grave when your family, your wealth, your friends and so forth will leave, will leave you. So what have we prepared for tomorrow? What have we prepared for tomorrow? Just the same way that we work hard day in and day out to earn money to survive, and so forth. The same way we should do to prepare ourselves and earn Allah's pleasure each and every single day that we live and breathe. Because our breath is very important. Our breath is more important than the, 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 the wealth that you collect because with every single breath that passes by, you will never get that same breath again. Nor are you able to get it back. And when that breath cut leaves you, your time starts to shorten. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ teaches us something very beautiful. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ taught us how to invest in our akhirah. Sometimes just working and earning money is not enough. Sometimes you have to invest in things that will bring you revenue, bring you incomes and profits that, you can, that will come later. And the same thing when we do in, when we live in this world. Not only are we praying our prayers, giving zakat and so forth, but we should invest in things that will help us in our akhirah when we need it the most. When we are in our graves and these rewards continue to come to us because of the investment that we placed and we've done in this world. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he tells us in a very famous hadith that each and every single one of us have heard many times, and that's the hadith. In which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "Ida mata ibn Adam," that when the the, ch child, the children of Adam passes away, in qata in anhu amaluhu illa min thalath, that all of his good deeds will be cut off; it will be stopped, except from three things. The first is sadaqat al jariyah, ongoing charity, wa ilm yuntafau bihi, beneficial knowledge. And the righteous child that will make dua for that individual. These are the three investments that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. That if we were to invest in these three things, we will see the Prophet in our graves and in the Akhirah. Because sometimes our own actions, our own ibad of prayer and self and so forth will not save us on that day. We're in need of generational wealth. We're in need of generational ibadah and deeds that will come to us in the akhirah, in the grave, when we need it the most. 
So when we look at these three things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, these are investments. The first being a material investment. The second being a, 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 an intellectual investment. And the last being the spiritual investment. So the first investment, which is the material investment, Sadaqat in Jariyah, ongoing charity. And that ongoing charity doesn't have to be much. It could be a dollar that you place into the masjid or you put into a masjid and that dollar will bring you a long way. And you look at some of the investments that people have done over the years. We, I was told about a teacher who back in the days in the 1980s when Starbucks was brand new, he decided to invest in Starbucks. He put in a dollar or two. And after that many years, not realizing how long that it was gonna, how far it was going to take him, now he became a millionaire just for that one dollar, two dollars that he's He's done. And that's just an investment in this world. What about the investment with Allah Azza wa Jal? What about that one dollar that you place to support a young child or support a masjid? Imagine giving a dollar to this masjid right after Juma today. How far would that take you? Imagine all the people that come into this masjid, that come and pray, that come to listen to lectures, that come and study, that come for Ramadan and so forth. For years and years, how much reward would you receive from just that one dollar that you receive? Imagine the children that come to the duksis and the, the Quran classes and Islamic schools and study from this day in and day out and one or two, maybe tens of those children that grow up to become someone special. And then they start teaching. And then the te people that they teach start teaching and it keeps going just for that one dollar that you placed in the masjid to help support the projects and the, fun the functionality of the masjid. How far can that bring you? So the spirit, the material investment is very important. That you invest in your akhirah by giving a dollar, two dollars, or whatever you were able to give. And that one dollar, two dollars will bring you a long way. And then you have the intellectual investment. And that's the investment of teaching. You don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to be a student in knowledge to be able to teach someone something. Imagine teaching the child, the huruf, the Arabic letters. And then they take those Arabic letters and they learn how to put them together. And then they learn how to put it together, they learn how to recite the Qur'an. And then when they learn how to recite the Qur'an, they memorize the Qur'an. And then when they memorize the Qur'an, they begin teaching other people as well. Just because you taught them Alif all the way to Ya. Imagine the reward that you'll be, you'll be receiving on that day when you need it the most. And you realize you're having mountains and mountains of good deeds and you're not knowing where it's coming from. And it's coming from that one ayah, that one verse. That one person that you call to Islam and all these different things. So in, in the intellectual investment is to teach someone something that when they learn it, they will benefit from it. And not only do you be they benefit from it, you benefit from it as well. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Man sanna fil Islam sunnatun hasana, That whoever teaches someone something good from Islam, they will get the reward of that action of teaching. And then if the person does it, that person will receive that reward and you receive the reward of the person without any reward being decreased from that person's reward at all. So everybody's banking. Everybody's making money. Everybody's receiving reward for that action that they've done for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. So these investments that we make for our akhirah, these things that we prep for ourselves for the akhirah, for the for tomorrow before our time expires, are, is very important. So we mentioned the material investment, which is sadaqat in jariya, and then we mentioned the intellectual investment, which is ilm yuntafau bihi, and the last investment. Is the investment that is a spiritual investment. Is raising children who will become someone special. Become someone who you've dreamed of them becoming. And they, when you pass away, will make dua for you. For each and every single day of their lives. And this is the investment that is very important. And in order for your children to be righteous children, you yourself have to be that individual. You yourself have to show them how important it is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and how important Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in your life. 
Because sometimes telling someone to do something is not enough. You have to show them through your actions. Because actions speak louder than words. If you want to tell your child to pray on time, you can't just be sitting on the couch watching TV or playing on your phone and telling your kids to pray on time and you're there delaying your prayers. You have to get up first and pray on time and then they will follow you, follow you in your action. If you want your child to memorize the Quran and you're telling them to memorize and you're putting them in all these duxies and these classes and so forth to memorize the Quran and you are sitting back watching TV for hours and hours, playing video games or whatever you're doing, and you expect your child to memorize the Qur'an, that's not going to happen. You have to show them that you yourself is trying. You're trying to memorize even if you're struggling yourself. But the fact that you're showing them that each and every single day that you are trying to memorize, and you're showing how important it is to do these different things, they will find it to be important as well. And when they find it to be important, they will teach their kids the same. And when you pass away, they will remember you for all the good that you've done to them. And they will never forget you in your, their, their du'as. This is the spiritual investment that is very important. Because it's connected to you and your children, the, the offsprings that you leave behind. Imagine living a life hoping that your offspring would be a, turn out a certain way when you never even put in the effort to do so. And when you pass away, while you're struggling alone in the grave, alone while the grave is tightening on you, and you're wondering why there's nothing there to come help and save you to widen your grave. Because you never put in that investment into your spiritual investment, investment in this world. So you shouldn't expect anything when you are there alone in the grave. And there's a very special hadith that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about a man who is standing in front of Allah on a day of judgment. And then Allah continues to raise him in ranks. And he's not... He's not understanding why he's being raised. So he asked Allah Azza wa Jal, How am I being raised? And then they will be said to him, It's because your child continues to make istighfar for you. Your child continues to ask for forgiveness for you. Because of those reasons, that's why you're being raised in ranks. So we should ask ourselves, What have we prepared for tomorrow? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us people who are aware and conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal and people that will prep themselves in this world and make themselves prepared in the grave and live a happy life in the grave that our lives will be easier in the Akhirah and to sway us away and protect us from being punished in the grave and, we, and receive a greater punishment in the Akhirah. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا واجعل خير أيامنا يوم نلقاك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار واقم الصلاة